Our next question is from David. Mm -hmm. He's, he asks, Comforting my daughter if she wakes up from a nightmare and is scared feels right. I naturally go to hold her and tell her as much truth as I'm aware of. I say things like that I believe that there's a spirit world and sometimes these people will scare us, but they're just people like you and me. Sometimes wearing masks like at Halloween, but Daddy will always do everything I can to keep you safe. I say I love her and that I will work on myself so that there will be less and less of this happening to her. Mm. <coughs> I just wanted to know what I feel might be happening and in the end to comfort her. I can see there's a fine line between going to addiction, not taking responsibility for what I attract, basically comforting myself, and, bet and between that and being a loving father. Mm -hmm. Where do you guys feel that line is? Would it be better and more loving just to feel my fear at that moment? Well, David, um, there's a lot of things you're skipping over here again in this question. So perhaps what we need to do is analyse things a little bit more deeply mm -hmm. in the question itself. Mm -hmm. And because I have met you, I obviously know <laughs> what emotions you are also avoiding. So let's talk about some of those. Yep. Firstly, your daughter feeling fear <clears throat> and waking up in an, from a nightmare feeling fear um, does not necessarily mean that you are afraid. If you look at what is happening in the event, you are coming to rescue a woman who's feeling fear. That's what's happening here. You are rescuing your daughter who is feeling fear and you, in the process, get to feel like you're a good dad. And to be honest, this is exactly what is happening between you and women. I just need a coffee again, sorry. So, so, David, the first thing that we need to be aware of here is that you're really in this codependent addiction here and you're acting it out with your daughter. Now, you're actually acting it out with every woman in your life. Your daughter's fear is a reflection of your wife's fear rather than your own. So that's the first thing he needs to understand. Mm -hmm. the daughter, his daughter is waking up terrified because his wife is terrified when she's either asleep or awake. Mm -hmm. and, and the daughter waking up terrified is a reflection of her own denied emotional experience. <clears throat> Her mother's own. Her mother's own yes. emotion. No, denied, no, I'm losing my voice again. Just let me stop. I, so, I just wouldn't mention everyone. I'm getting a bit hammered today from, from spirits and so forth and uh, I've had a busy day already. So that's why my voice keeps going on me and hopefully we'll, it'll clear up as we progress. Yeah. But getting back to the subject, the, the, the relationship that he has with women is this. Yeah. He is the rescuer. Mm -hmm. He meets many of his own addictions by becoming the rescuer. He gets to feel like he's either a good father or a good husband or a good man. Mm -hmm. And he's mostly rescuing women. Mm -hmm. So he gets to also have projections at him that are more sexual in nature, you know, particularly from his wife. Mm -hmm. And when his wife does not give him those feelings, he then feels sexually inadequate. So he's looking to feel sexually inadequate adequate through the f feelings that he gets projected at him from his wife. Mm -hmm. And, of course, um, his wife's in a lot of fear, and we know that because his daughter is in a lot of fear. Yeah. And so his daughter is not in fear because of his fear. Mm -hmm. So that's the first thing. And so this question, and this is similar with many other questions that we get, demonstrates that a lot of times a person asking a question has no real reflection of what's really going on. Yeah. They don't really understand what's going, what, what they've attracted and why. Yeah. When a woman goes into fear around David, David feels he must rescue her. Mm -hmm. That's what's going on. He doesn't want to feel why he's got to rescue her. He doesn't want to feel what he gets out of rescuing her. Yeah. But he never, so he, so he goes into his addiction and rescues. Mm -hmm. and, and while I'm not saying that to, to hold your daughter 
and remind her about the truth is a bad thing because I don't believe it is a bad thing. In this case, it is driven completely by his desire to rescue a woman from fear. Now, if it was me with his daughter, I would be saying, let yourself feel your fear. Let yourself go through your fear. Let yourself experience it. And if it was me, I would also be getting my wife into the room and saying, you have got a lot of denied fear because your daughter keeps on waking up with denied fear and I keep feeling like I've got to rescue it. Mm -hmm. And unless you deal with your denied fear, our daughter is going to keep waking up with it. And David doesn't want to do that with his wife because he, he finds that it's very, very difficult to confront any emotion in his wife without his wife becoming disappointed with him. Mm-hmm. And as soon as she becomes disappointed with him, he then now feels like an inadequate man. Mm-hmm. So in other words, he does not stand up for truth in the relationship with his wife, and his wife is in a lot of fear, and his daughter naturally is going to reflect the fear of his wife. Yeah. That's what's really happening. And he, through his own addictions, wants to feed the fear and wants to make it go away and then feels good about himself when he does, but it doesn't make the fear go away. Hence, the daughter will keep on waking up in fear. And that's an indication that his wife keeps on not addressing her own fear. Mm -hmm. That's what is actually happening in the relationship. And he does not want to address that with his wife. He would rather go and rescue his daughter. And that's what's really going on in this particular question. So just to be clear, um, <coughs> David, say, David, his little girl's having a nightmare. He goes into the room and he... Yeah, why does he, he go in and not his wife? Yeah. So that's the first question, mm-hmm. right? Mm-hmm. And the reality is his wife is not going to make his daughter's fear go away because she is in just as much fear that she denies and that's what his, her, his daughter is actually reflecting. Mm-hmm. And that's why it's he that goes into the room to, to try to sort out her fear. Yeah, yep. yeah. So that's the role he's invested in. He's invested in that role and so is she, his wife. Yes. Both of them are invested in those roles. She wants the man to make the fear go away. David spends a lot of his life, obviously, making her, his wife's fear, go away. Mm-hmm. And he does whatever his wife suggests is the thing that she wants him to do. And a lot of his life is actually based around pleasing his wife, right? And this is what I would classify as a codependent, (laughs) addictive relationship. Now, of course, his wife probably doesn't want to hear that. And I don't know if David actually wants to hear that (laughs) either. But but I I do, I have met David, so I know that he's quite open to hearing new truths. But I doubt whether he's as open as discussing them with his wife Mm -hmm. as he is about reflecting upon them himself. Mm. And this is where he lacks courage. Mm-hmm. If a person is truly wanting to resolve this particular issue with the child, they'd have the courage to raise the issue with their wife. And the issue is the wife's, the wife's unresolved a- and denial of fear. Yeah. Unresolved fear and denial of fear. Yep. And so to clarify, you're saying that David... Basically, him going into the room and being with his daughter at that time, mm-hmm. he's confusing the issue. He's thinking, she's reflecting my denied fear. Am I well, not? Well, no, David wants to believe that. That's David right. wants to believe that, he's, that the daughter is reflecting his denied fear, and she's not. Yeah. She's reflecting the denied fear of his wife. Yeah. Right? Yeah. And, and he wants to believe that because he does, he gets something out of making the fear go away personally, there's mm-hmm. an addiction involved, but also if he confronted his wife with her denied fear, she'd probably get angry and he doesn't want to receive her anger. So he's addicted to not being, you know, he's, a, he's addicted to having a smooth relationship with his wife, yeah. which means that he must make his wife's fear go away as well. Yeah. And so really he's thinking, I need to feel fear. Mm-hmm. Um, or I need to feel what's really going on for me is what he's telling himself. That's what he's telling himself. And you're saying that he doesn't really want to know what's going on for himself. No. But if he was to do the, to approach this issue in a more loving way, mm-hmm. then you're not saying that he. You're saying that he would then be feeling, ah, oh, here's me in this role again. This is me rescuing a woman from fear. Mm-hmm. It may not be that he he 
or he may still go in and tell, be with his daughter while, and But he wouldn't do what he's doing with truth. his daughter either. He would, but he wouldn't, the emotion coming out of him wouldn't be, it'd be different. Totally different. The emotion coming out of him towards his daughter was, would be, I want you to be able to understand that you can cope with your fear. Yeah. You can feel it as an emotion. I want you to be able to go through the experience of it as an emotion. So that's number one. He'll be encouraging his daughter to go through the experience of fear rather than telling him her a whole heap of things that helps her get away from her fear. Yeah. Does that make sense? While he's telling her the truth, at the end she won't believe any of it until the fear is gone. Yeah. And the fear has to go through the experience and so she needs to experience it. Yeah. Now in this case, because she's a child, she's reflecting the denied fear of her mother. Mm -hmm. so, so unless her mother goes through her own fear, this, will con this problem will continue. And what Dave is actually doing is shutting down his daughter's expression of the fear. So she, he's going to grow, she's going to grow up to be exactly like her mother. Yeah. She's going to be denying her own fear and expecting a man to rescue her every time. And that's going to be a very codependent addiction that he's yes. actually creating in the daughter. So it's actually quite a dangerous thing to do yes. what he's doing, even though he, he's telling himself, he's telling her the truth. Yeah. From an emotional perspective, what he's telling her is that she needs a man to rescue her from her fear. That's what he's telling her. And that that's a man who loves her. And he's also telling her that uh, you, you can't cope with fear. She, you he's need, telling, yeah, you need a man you, in order to cope with fear. You're not able to do it on you're your own. You're not able to do it by yourself. Yeah. That's yeah. what she's telling, he's yeah. telling her daughter. And, of course, this is exactly what his wife believes. Yes. Right? Yeah. So, and, and he's not unwilling to confront his wife, so that's mm -hmm. the second issue. He's unwilling to confront his wife and her fear. Yeah. And the reason was is because whenever his wife's fear is confronted, she gets angry. Yeah. And, and that's a normal response for most people who, who have their fear confronted unwillingly. Yeah. And he's afraid of her anger. It doesn't make him feel like a nice man when she's angry all the time. Mm -hmm. And so he reverts to pandering to her fear yeah. as a result. So in addition, his wife is not bearing any responsibility for the daughter's fear. Mm -hmm. Because David is not telling his wife the truth and his wife refused to acknowledge the truth, she, she's, she's refusing to see the link between her own denied fear and the daughter's expression of it. And that's very dangerous both for both of them. She is basically now encouraging her daughter to go into fear, basically, through her denied actions, and at the same time encouraging her daughter to need a man to rescue her, yeah. which is exactly the addiction that her, she, his wife, has with him in their relationship. Yeah. So, so this is not a very good situation. And, and I can't agree that the course of action taken is the best course of action. Mm -hmm. While he is telling her the truth, he's not telling himself the truth. Yes. And he's not telling his wife the truth. Yes. And of course, He's encouraging the addiction in the daughter. Mm -hmm. And so this d child, this girl child, is going to grow up to be an adult who eventually gets obviously with a man at some point, probably in her case, a man in some point. And what's she going to demand of the man? To do exactly what daddy does. Yeah. And when that man doesn't do what daddy does, what, what's she going to think of that man? She's going well, to be angry. Angry. She certainly believe he doesn't love her. Yep. Uh, uh, she'll want to dismiss him and find another man who will take away her fear, who Correct. is not necessarily... And she'll call a man who takes away her fear a man who loves her, Yeah. which is a complete distortion of love. God doesn't take away our fear. Mm -hmm. God, ex God expects us to feel it yeah. and experience it. That's what God expects. Mm -hmm. So... So he is creating an addictive nightmare for later on in her life yeah. and by not working through his own addictions and also challenging his wife to work through hers. And if I could clarify that with you, mm -hmm. um, you're basically saying that it's important that, they, that David and his wife, so the parents of this young girl, actually deal with the codependence in their relationship. Yes. Because... When I know sometimes when parents hear things like this, they say, oh, well, it's better to leave them alone then because no. then they'll <laughs> learn that they can deal with fear. When actually when a child is living in that soup of codependence, the emotional messages they're getting are uh, that the they opposite. can't deal with fear anyway. So Correct. leaving them alone is actually... So the emotional yeah. message coming from mum is to the daughter is, you can't deal with your own fear, you need a man to help you. Mm -hmm. That's the feeling she has. 
she feels that she can't deal with her own fear, she can't deal with her own safety, she can't deal with her own security, she needs a man to do it. Every time the man doesn't do it, she gets angry. Yeah. Right? That's what she's teaching her child. And that's what David is teaching his child. Yes. It's the same thing. He's yeah. teaching it that a man will come to your rescue, will mm -hmm. come to a woman's rescue. This is what makes a good man. Mm -hmm. A good man always comes to the woman's rescue rather than encouraging the woman to feel her own fear. Yeah. Right? Now... When that child grows up, that's what she's going to believe. Mm -hmm. And it's going to be complete distortion of love. It's completely the opposite of the way God loves. Yeah. Completely the opposite. Whereas we can instill in children um, a confidence in their ability to feel their own fear, can't we, by being with them and having that feeling within us. You're you fine. Can you can do this. You can, you yep. can go through that feeling. Yep. I'm here. I love you. You'll yep. be fine. You'll be to fine. Go, that. Just go through the feeling. Yep. It doesn't matter what it is, whether there's yep. monsters in the room or there's yep. a bad dream or any of those things. You can go through it. But, but with a child, you also have to address the other parent yep. or yourself. Yep. So if it was David who, who had all this fear, and it's not David who has this fear in the same way that the child has the fear, mm -hmm. David doesn't have those kind of fears. His fears are all relating to around pleasing the woman. Yeah. And, and that, you take that away from him and he's terrified. Yeah. Like if you take that goal away from him, he'll be terrified. Mm -hmm. And that's why he has never, ever actually dealt with issues front, face to face with his wife on these particular subjects and why he has a temptation to blame himself rather than looking at what's going on for what his partner. What else is going on, yeah. Mm. Yeah. So, so you know, we can dis we can distort the whole thing. And this is the trouble with a, a, a mental, analytical way of looking at things. We can distort the entire thing and make it completely the opposite thing than what we what we what what is really going on, and in the process, feed our addictions rather than confronting them. Yeah. And what David needs to do to confront his addictions is to stop making a woman feel safe encourage her instead to go through her emotions of fear. Mm -hmm. Now, if he does that with his wife, I suggest that she would probably get quite angry. He could even explain to her that you're probably going to get quite angry <laughs> with me yeah. taking this approach. But, yeah. but honestly, you have a lot of fear and I keep on pandering to it. And this has got to stop if we're ever going to grow in our relationship and actually have a loving relationship. My role isn't to make your fear go away. Right? And your role isn't to tell me that I'm a great guy for making your fear go away. Yeah. Right? Yeah. We, we need to have completely different roles that are based more upon love and not codependent addiction. Mm -hmm. Now, you can attempt to have that kind of conversation, but as, you know, we've covered in our Human Relationships Partners series of FAQs, they might not respond at all. And, and to be honest, there's some questions coming up in the Human Relationship Partner issues where... Um, where there are times when you might actually have to leave a relationship because the other party doesn't want to deal with any of their emotional addictions at all. Mm -hmm. um, and, but, but in this case, I'd say both parents don't want to deal with their emotional <laughs> addictions at all yeah. yet because both parents haven't and both parents are actually acting out their emotional addictions and are bringing up a child who is eventually going to have exactly the same addictions that they have. That they have. Mm. Mm. Okay, thank you. All right.